Wide receiver Jerry Judy was carted off the field with a very concerning looking ankle injury. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and this is your number one source for learning about the unique medical side of the world of sports. Let's dive right into the play here. So after Judy makes this reception, keep an eye on his right foot and ankle. So as he plants that right foot, you can see how it basically gets rolled up on by the Giants defender. And as he's in this position, what I want you to pay attention to are number one, look at the position of his knee and his femur pointed relatively straightforward in relation to the rest of his lower body. But then of course his tibia is pointed out this way and in particular his foot is externally rotated out this way to the side. Now if you've seen my videos in the past talking about high ankle sprains and hopefully you recognize this position as the classic mechanism for a high ankle sprain. As Judy plants here that ankle joint gets locked within the mortise and then as the defender falls on him, that pushes his foot out into external rotation with a little bit of E version where the inside of his ankle comes down closer to the field. What that's gonna do is stress that ankle syndesmosis between the tibia and the fibula, ultimately resulting in concern for a high ankle sprain. Understandably, when people first saw this replay, there was some concern for a pretty bad ankle injury, maybe even a fracture. As you look here from this posterior view, you can see just the severe amount of E version that's forced onto his right ankle. So here again in this position, his tibia is sort of back here behind the defender, and look at how close the inside of his ankle is down onto the turf. This is the opposite of a classic lateral or lower ankle sprain where you get forced into inversion, the outside of the foot rolls over to the ground. Here it's the inside of the foot that comes down, and so there's a combination of this external rotation with the ankle joint locked, combined with this forced eversion that can also strain the inner ligaments of the ankle. But Definitely understand the concern here on the first replay because this is the position that can result in not only an ankle fracture, but also an ankle dislocation. The official word on Judy is that he has a high ankle sprain and the x-rays are negative. Now the x-rays being negative really just means that there's not a fracture, but there's actually some other important things we can learn about the severity of a high ankle sprain based on the x-rays. If you look here at our biodigital anatomy tool, I've highlighted the main kind of groups of ankle ligaments. The ones here in green are on the outside of the ankle, and these are our traditional lateral ankle ligaments that are injured in a common inversion, typical run-of-the-mill ankle sprain. But the one here in pink is the high ankle sprain ligament. It's the AITFL. It runs from the front of the fibula to the tibia, and it helps to maintain that integrity, that connection between those two bones of the lower leg. If we look on the inside of the ankle, this group is going to be the deltoid ligaments. So if we look straight on at the foot here, of course, if we go into inversion, that means the foot rotates in this way, which is going to, of course, pull and put tension on these outer ligaments, causing a lateral ankle sprain. But when the foot goes the other direction into eversion, now, of course, that's going to put tension and stress on those inner deltoid ligaments. Similarly, because the talus of the ankle joint is sort of locked in between the tibia and the fibula, when you go into that external rotation, it stresses that high ankle sprain ligament, pushing those bones apart, leading to that high ankle sprain. So if we go back to our play here and think first about that eversion, here we can see as the defender initially falls on Judy's ankle, this is where we see a lot of that forced eversion. Right here in this position, initially the ankle is kind of neutral, Defender falls on him, knocks that inner portion of the ankle down to the ground, stretching those medial deltoid ligaments. And then from the front here, we have a boom, that initial eversion, but then this severe amount of forced external rotation. So classic position for a high ankle sprain, and thankfully he is actually very fortunate to have avoided a much more serious injury. Now I mentioned we can actually learn more about the severity of a high ankle sprain based on the x-rays, even if they're technically read as negative. Here on the left, we have a normal, what we call AP or anterior posterior, view of the ankle. So we can see our tibia here, the big shin bone, our fibula here, and then remember our high ankle ligament is sort of running right in this direction. Now you can imagine what's gonna happen if you tear that ligament. Those two bones are gonna spread farther apart. And sure enough here on an abnormal one, now you can see all of this space between the tibia and the fibula because of that high ankle ligament being torn. Whenever we're reviewing ankle x-rays, we specifically make these measurements where we look at what we call this tib-fib overlap to see how close those two bones are to one another. You can see the difference here. Clearly there's no overlap in this case with the high ankle sprain. We also look at what we call this medial clear space, the area kind of between the medial portion of the tibia and the talus. And here again, you can see how wide that area is 
suggesting that that ankle joint is unstable and there's been injury to this ligament. Now you also have to be very careful because sometimes you can miss a subtle fracture just on the x-rays and so you still would think about getting something like an MRI or a CT scan even though the x-rays might not show a fracture. It's important to know that high ankle sprains are going to have a much longer recovery compared to a traditional low ankle sprain. This isn't something that usually ends a player's season, but can certainly cause them to miss a big chunk of time, sometimes on the order of a month or more, just depending on the severity of how badly those ligaments are injured. The next steps are gonna be an MRI to look at the severity of the ligament damage, consideration of possible surgery depending on what they find, and then ultimately the recovery period is going to depend on those factors, how badly the ligaments are injured, if there is presence of any fracture missed on the x-ray, and then whether or not they decide they need to do a surgery. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know, as always, any questions or comments down below. Until next time, we'll see you later.